Hey, Lorenzo. So I have got a question for you. And my question is, you spend a lot of time thinking about user research, doing a lot of user research. And I'm sure you in that process are get, getting a lot of insights that are new to the business, which of course, then you are using for A-B testing. But A-B testing is just one, it's an important part, but just one part of a business. How do you kind of communicate with your clients or communicate with brands to take some of those insights? Can they be applied to other parts of the business? And how do you navigate that? What thoughts do you have about that? Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a great question. Um, actually, you, you and I uh, have a client we're working with at the moment. And I remember one of the one of the first things that he asked when, you know, one of the first calls that we had with this client, um, you know, when I presented like the research process and so on, this client was like, this, this client was like, this person was like, okay, Lorenzo, um, can we apply the insights from CRO customer research purposes to anywhere else? Like, can we use those insights and then use it for other purposes? And I said, Oh my God, I can't believe somebody asked that question because I never got that as, as a question from, uh, from people yeah. at the end of the day, you know, um, on site is just like one small piece of the entire journey, right. That users, uh, take like, right. Like if you think about the type of insights, I I'm going to list them down a little bit just to make you understand. But if you think about the type of insights that come up from customer research, um, you know, like, for example, why the product is not good, right? That insight, yeah, sure, can can be helpful for the product team. But what about the email marketing team that now all of a sudden knows that, you know, maybe like the copywriter of the email marketing flow needs to transform that negative uh, aspect of the product into a positive one, right? Or what about, you know, you do reviews mining, uh, you come up with a, a bunch of benefits that people mentioned that they received from a product that, that maybe like you didn't even think about, right? Mm -hmm. Well, now you got a list, like a laundry list of selling angles that you can use in your Facebook ads campaign, in your TikTok campaign, in your, you know, new keywords to go after in your Google ads campaign, or, you know, maybe you discover that a lot of people use your product for a specific use case that you have never even thought about that. And you start to do a little bit of keyword research about that. And you discover that for that use case, the SEO keyword um, competition is like very, very low. There's low barrier, right? Compared to another one. So now you have another, you know, new topic of use case of, of topics and keywords to go after for your uh, SEO team, right? So um, to me, this is like a big opportunity for brands because you're the one that is doing the research to understand your customers more, but the onsite experience is just like one piece of the puzzle. Um, so absolutely, um, absolutely. I, I, I think this is a, a, a big opportunity for growth as well because you know, in my experience, CRO people are the ones that do customer research. The other departments don't really do that. And which means that they don't have those insights. Yeah, it's a, it's a really good point. And especially for small businesses, um, it is it is a game changer because it allows them to it allows them to essentially create a bigger multiplier effect of their investment. So they basically their investment is going further, right? When they've taken those insights that you got from, from user research and applied them to customer service and applied them to top of the funnel, you're essentially re significantly reducing the cost of your service. Um, yep. And I think it also improves the understanding of the common understanding of the business across all departments versus you know, oh, there's one department that knows everything and then I have other departments that don't and they still are being, you know, th th there's that lack of context. So yeah, I think this this just and, makes logical sense. And you also save money because you don't have to hire a copywriter anymore because you, have, you can swipe the copy straight from the customer. No, I'm just kidding about that, by the way. But, you know, what I'm trying to say here is that you can leverage the language, like the exact words 
that customers are using in those interviews or in their views mining or in the surveys or, you know, in a YouTube video about your product, like th that reviews your product um, for your Facebook ads campaign, for your email marketing campaigns, for your TikTok hooks and, and so on. Um, and I want to give you a couple of examples of, of companies that have done that, Rishi. So one is actually um, an example of a, of a company that I, I work with. Um, when I was working with with CXL, um, with Spiro, we uh, discovered, I, I had to go into like customer support tickets and goods very, very, very deep into understanding why people are, were reaching out to, 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 to the agents. And we discovered that the biggest, uh, the most popular topic, the most popular reason was they wanted to cancel um, the subscription. So it was. This was a direct consumer brand that also had a, a subscription um, option, and you know, I'm like, okay, you know, this is this is interesting from a CRO perspective, right? But then I went into like deep into like analyzing one ticket by one ticket and and kind of like look at the the entire conversation between the agent and, and the customer, and. I'm not even kidding. 95% of the conversations were like this, Rishi. Rishi is the customer, reaches out to the brand. Lorenzo is the agent. And the customer asks, hey, um, can you go ahead and cancel my subscription with you guys? Lorenzo, the agent, would say, yeah, sure. Give me two minutes that I enter into your account. Two, minute pa two minutes pass by. All right, you're your uh, account has been canceled. Um, you no longer receive product and a subscription. As soon as I saw that across so many tickets, I went to my client and I'm like, dude, we need to change. We need to train your customer support agent on how he actually, sh he, he should um, react to these conversations because like not even ask you one question or why they're canceling, right? Is a big problem and making it like so easy to cancel. I'm not even talking about, and again, you and I spoke about this. I'm not even suggesting to do what, um, you know, classic phone companies do where they make it like a network to cancel, but then like extracting information from customers. So what we did was we rewrote the entire script Every time somebody uh, reached out to customer support, now they had a new script of kind of like questions that they had to, and, and it was just like simple question for customer support and, and customer research purposes. So that's one example. Um, the other example comes from uh, Himson's and hers. Mm -hmm. Do you know? Uh, yeah, it's, mm -hmm. you know, very popular direct to consumer brand. Um, I actually think they're a public company uh, in, in the US in the New York Stock Exchange. But what happens is that through customer research, they discover that one of the key moments, and one of the, I should say that one of the products that they sell is, I think it's a supplement for people that are about, they're balding basically, for guys that are balding. So you take the supplement and I think your hair grows. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm not too sure, but, but this is kind of like the problem they're trying to solve. So they target people that are starting to, to bald. And one of the insights that they discovered from customer research was that um, one of the most common moments when people were discovering that they were balding was at the gym when they were in front of the mirror and they were drying their hair and they were realizing that they were balding, right? <laughs> and what they were they've done, which I thought it was a genius idea, um, they went to a bunch of gyms. I think it was kind of like 24-hour fitness, those gym chains that they have in the, in the U.S. And basically like bought advertising space. So they pitched them to bring in a new income stream for the gym, which, you know, is an awesome idea, right? Um, and they pitched them to put their banner ads in the locker room of, you know, thousands of locations uh, across the U.S., which I thought it was a, a very you know, creative and, um, uh, you know, kind of like a, you know, guerrilla marketing type of uh, approach that is very different than the classic, okay, I'm going to buy a bunch of Facebook ads. Yeah, no, I think it's a great idea. I, I really like it. And um, it's so clever. It's it's genius. I, I should actually make a note of this in my swipe file because I like to collect these kind of stories. Um, and I think this is a 
this is a, a a really a really good one. So thank you for sharing those those two examples. Yeah. The way I think about this in general, Rishi, is you show your message at one of the highest you know moment of of pain pain or realization aha moment for the user that needs to solve that problem. So for me, it's like right place at the at the right time with the right hundred percent. I love it. I love it. Thank you. Thank you. We will see you guys again. Um, if you're if you've just stumbled on this video, um, Lorenzo and I uh, cover cover this these kind of topics every single day. Um, sign up, leave a comment. Um, I think you'll really like this content. Take care.